Hi guys, <laughs> the old man sneaked into the shop for a quick project. I'll try and keep the waffle short. I've uh, just finished it a little while ago. Uh, just as well actually because the heat is gone stupid. <laughs> oh dear, yesterday was uh, much fresher and bearable. So I got a fair bit of work done on it and then uh, picked it up this morning but the humidity's just gone off the clock again and uh, I just called off in the office and I've come out here just to do this intro and uh, stupid heat, I know I keep going on about it but it gets uh, it gets too much for this old fella um, Anyway I've made a, an extension for the uh, ram on the hydraulic press. Uh, it's not, I've used a different approach actually compared with what Lee Pedin did, Mr. Pragmatic Lee. Uh, he made some very nice items. Um, one end goes onto the ram and then he turned it down to about the inch and a half and then he made a smaller one which would actually go onto that one if he wanted. <laughs> so. Uh, I've got a different route. I've used a piece of aluminum for the uh, attachment block to the ram and then I threaded that and then made the extension piece to go in and uh, I can later on make a shorter one as another option. But uh, something I've meant to do for ages. I haven't started on a larger project yet because I know I can't get continuity one day after another. So I'll get onto something else when it cools off again. <laughs> <laughs> if ever, and then it'll be frozen nuts, won't it? Next thing you know. Anyway, that's enough. I don't think there's anything else I was going to mention. A uh, lot of different clips whilst I was making this. And I'll hope, hopefully assemble it so it makes some sort of sense. But I'm quite pleased with the end result. Anyway, that's the main thing. Uh, not great tolerances. Um, functional, my usual word. <laughs> okay, here you go. Here's the video. See you later sometime. Take care. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. And just facing off, just checking that is uh, two, and a, uh, two and a quarter. Facing this off, I'm going to cut off approximately a two inch chunk. Then we can put that back in the uh, in the chuck and we're going to bore it out to inch and a half to go onto the um, ram of the press. All will become clear as mud later so I'm just facing this first. A little bit left there, but I've got to turn this down slightly. Uh, two and a quarter, I don't need as much, so I'm going to go down to about two inch. And uh, you'll see what happens as we progress. I'm also experimenting with some old HSS tools, which I've done a bit of a re-grind on, so I'm sort of playing with those and uh, different grinds. Not getting much uh, chip breaking out of this. <laughs> right, I'm down to two inch, bit of chamfer there, and uh, we'll go and hack this off. Well, we've made the chop, so we've got to face this end off, and uh, then we've got a load of boring out to do.
Right, it's not too bad. And uh, we can probably just pop a quick chamfer on here whilst we're at it. Alright, now we've got to do some drilling first. Right, we've got a half inch starter hole. Just going up to this is 15 16 actually. My inch drill is not quite so good at the moment, needs a tweak. But uh, just to open it up and then we can get boring on it. Uh, I'm in back gear at the moment. And so on. <laughs> boring, boring. Got quite a way to go yet. I'm taking that 20 thou, and of course, we get a great big twist of chips coming out. Well, you can't exactly see a whole lot there, can you? <laughs> I'll come back when we're closer to finished. This is the phase <coughs> of uh, sneaking up on it. <laughs> it's, I've got to take a 5 thou cut and then we're down to the last little bit. I'm aiming for, uh, what am I aiming for? 1.501, I think. See where we're at. Let's check that a minute. Got about four thousand to go there. Let's check again. We'll just take a two thousand cut and see what we've got. Might be just a spring pass to finish it. Right, that's on 1.5 exactly. So I'm just taking a spring pass and see if that'll get me to where I want. Check it and see. There we are, 501. Incidentally, I didn't mention earlier, but the reason, two reasons for doing this in aluminum, this is what's going onto the uh, ram on the press. I am very short of large material to do it in steel, but also I plan to put two fairly decent magnets in the bottom and it's going to be a lot easier to set the magnets up and seeing as the stresses on this are entirely in compression I'm not worried about strength and then the other side oh, I've got to level off the bottom yet I'll do that in a minute then we'll turn it round we've got to put some thread in this end and you'll see what that's for when I get a bit further I'm just finishing the bottom here 
and I couldn't share much of that because I'd have my damn head in the way. And this may be just about the last cut, I think. Well, there's a little nib in the middle there, but I'm not worried about that because it's not going to interfere with what we're planning. And I've come to the outside slightly generously there, so we get a decent sit on the ram. I think that'll be okay. I've just got to put a chamfer on, the, on there, which we can probably do with this fella, I think. Just slack off the uh, carriage stop. Uh, there we are, I think it'll do. So the next operation this side is going to be in the mill. So we're going to find a way to try and fit magnets. So I'm going to turn this round and then we're going to put a thread in it, which will be a blind thread. It's not going to quite come up to that mark. I was going to use a half inch thread, but uh, for several reasons. I've gone for 7, 16, 14. And when I cut the uh, male thread, I'll single point it and finish with a die. It'll make it easier. I've got to do some uh, change wheel mods if I did half inch 13. And I noticed, you probably see it, I don't know, I didn't face off quite enough. There's a little mark left there from a cut. Not to worry. My usual word, functional. So there's the, uh, it's about an eighth of an inch in the middle that I didn't bother to flatten out. Thing is now, will it fit? <laughs> Let's see. Please ignore the junk in the background, it's normal. <laughs> now then, let's see. Now let's try again. The This was all very oily. I couldn't really get much grip. Let's try now. There we are. It's still slippery. <laughs> yeah, 1.501. That's just... It will stay there on its own, but not with uh, extra weight underneath, which is why we'll add magnets. I just came in for a bit of that turning. This is uh, 1 and 5 eighths, uh, 1045. Not my favourite material actually. I'll tell you what, it's damn difficult to get anything like a decent finish. I've tried two or three, two or three inserts and I'm running in back gear at 180 so it's pretty slow and if I put this in the video it'll have been speeded up I haven't got far to go now but don't like this finish at all don't like that at all so I'm going to take a tooth out sort of finishing pass with a finer feed to see how it comes out 
I've got the speed back up now. Come out of back gear. That was uh, 635 RPMs, which is my lowest on uh, normal. Ah, that's not too bad. And cosmetics are not really super important, but <laughs> it's, it would be nice to have a better finish. You get the impression with this material, other people may be well familiar with 1045. It's not a bad cut, but you get that impression that it's tearing. I mean, that was a fine feed. It's about half the feed of the last lot when I was roughing. Uh, anyway, minor point, I'll probably just polish it a bit. And then we've got to take this out, put it in the other way, and then this end here is to turn down and make a thread, 7 16 14, to go in the piece of aluminum. Well, this is a bit tedious, turning all this down to uh, 7 16 Pretty smoky too. enough of that. <laughs> uh, let's keep going. Just got to face off the uh, the back on here. Doesn't need much. Get a decent surface. And as I said before, I think I'm going to single point this to give it a start and then we'll finish with a button die. Get the thread on it. So we need a chamfer on there, slight chamfer on here, and uh, thread relief. As usual I'm using the uh, spindle handle being a rather short thread. A lot of ways to go on here. I've got to go down to about 40 thou I think altogether or close to it. Probably won't go a lot further. This should be giving me a good uh, start for the die. One more pass, I think. And I can go a bit more than that. I thought earlier I was getting some problem with the half nuts, which I think are probably getting a bit worn, actually.
Well, there's still some cut to be taken. And if I'd used the die on its own, that would have been hellish hard work. And the other thing I have got to do, the uh, female thread in the aluminum is, uh, I haven't got a bottoming tap, so I couldn't get right to the bottom of the hole. So I'll have to put a slight taper on the first threads so I still get good uh, all the way through. So I think we should be alright. That's uh, what I've lost because I haven't got a bottoming tap. So, in fact, I think the female thread, although it was done with a tap, feels a bit sloppy. But once this is tightened up, it'll be okay. Now, I could have just shortened this, just done a little bit of file work relieve those uh, last couple of threads. I say this is looser than I expected. I'm not really sure why it's quite so sloppy but it doesn't really matter because there we go. Actually you can't see that. <laughs> yeah that does up all the way. Okay. Next thing is a bit of mill time. Well actually, that's actually staying in place. I'll put some magnets in there. Of course the whole objective here was, um, by having this threaded, is uh, I'll make a shorter one. It needn't be inch and a half, it could probably be a little bit smaller, but it's something, if you're broaching, it's a typical example where you want to uh, avoid having to move the platform and that's holding. Anyway, we'll try and do the magnets at some point. Right, we've got this uh, in the vise. Just trying to get it set up uh, for centre. That's good enough for my purposes. The first thing I want here is to set up two 2.5mm holes to tap M3 and they're going to hold the magnets in place, hopefully. that. Uh, that's one tapping hole. I'm having to ex extend the uh, lay there line. I'm going to move across and do the other one. Well again you won't, <laughs> you won't see much what's going on inside here. So I want uh, two 16mm pockets either side for a 15mm magnet and I'll probably go a little bit deep and then put a thin piece of paper underneath to get the exact level.
and better clear the chips out. Anyway, <laughs> I won't show any more of this. There's nothing much to see really. Okay, <clears throat> this is what we got inside. Probably a lot of glare because it's so shiny. As I expected, it's broken through into the uh, centre hole. I did the math for that and it actually has worked out okay, <laughs> fortunately. Now I'll put the magnets in and uh, then we'll try it. Well, getting the magnets in <laughs> was not that easy. Seeing as the screw wants to attract to the magnet and the magnet one wants to attract to the other. Anyway, I did a trial. It uh, holds pretty good on the uh, press, but I've got this little piece of slug here. Click. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's holding. Oh, got too much oil on my hands. <laughs> anyway, let's put it all together. Right, we're done. Well, that's doing all right. All I've got to do now, when I get to it, if I've got some suitable material, just to make another one of these, perhaps half the length. Lee Pedin, uh, Mr. Pragmatic Lee, made some very nice ones, all out of solid. And uh, he made each one stack on another. I haven't gone that route but uh, I may just make another shorter one and it's a fairly easy job to do a change there we go